Doom, the video game that makes opening a portal to hell look like a surprisingly good idea. Because nothing says satisfaction like exploding the heads of demons and literally Satan. Those are both goals we can all get down with. Perhaps that's why a game that pushes the boundaries of brutal and disgusting is beloved by millions and was able to spearhead the entire first-person shooter genre. I'll put a caveat marker right there, because I probably just offended a lot of people with that statement. Fortunately, those offended will get their offendedness soothed in the coming seconds. And not too many seconds either. It'll be a reasonable amount of time, in my opinion. So crush the skull of your enemy beneath your feet while you roar at the moons of a foreign planet like the cyber-enhanced primal death machine you were always meant to be. Hell hath no fury like your motherfucking fists, and it's about time that Satan, the universe's biggest pussy, realizes that. As the most vile demons succumb to your testosterone-fueled genocide, the context from whence this insanely awesome, insanely terrifying debacle came will be revealed to us in the story that binds these hellish rampages together. The story that's based more on real life than many would like to believe. The story you never knew. Caveat time, told you it wasn't long. I said that the original Doom spearheaded the first-person shooter genre. A bold statement, but is it really true? How could it be when Wolfenstein 3D, a highly influential FPS game, came out before Doom did? The answer is that Wolfenstein 3D laid the foundations for the FPS experience we know today, while Doom built off of those foundations with a more perfected version that we still use over two decades later. They've both been integral in creating the first-person shooter genre, but Doom's role in this evolution is the one that truly perfected the art of looking through the eyes of a soldier. Which brings us to the utterly horrifying experience that we happily pay to immerse ourselves in. Earlier I said that Doom, as hardcore and unimaginable as it may seem, is far more similar to reality than many would like to believe. And within this twinge of reality is an important message. But how could Doom be even remotely realistic, you ask? And what message could it possibly be sending us when it contains nothing but mindless violence? Let's dig into the original Doom, released in 1993, to explore these questions. In the beginning of Doom 1, we find ourselves on Mars. The character you play as is a space marine known by many as Doom Guy, who recently assaulted his commanding officer after being ordered to fire on civilians. An interesting moral tidbit in a game notoriously violent. As punishment for his actions, Doom Guy was sent here to the Martian surface, where soldiers are destined to dust light fixtures and clean toilets for the rest of their careers. But just as the border becomes unbearable, an unspeakably exciting event transpires. That event being the catastrophic failure of the UAC's interdimensional travel technology being developed on the Martian moons of Phobos and Deimos. As the only battle-ready soldiers within millions of miles, your unit is sent to Phobos for damage control. It turns out that all hell has quite literally broken loose. With demons pouring from the corrupted portal, scientists becoming possessed and corrupted, and your unit having to deal with this shit. The plan is for you to guard the exterior with nothing but a pistol while the rest of your buddies head inside. Unsurprisingly, they all die, leaving only you between the universe's most evil manifestations and the fragile blue marble we call home. Fortunately, your rampage tears through every demon on Phobos and Deimos, and only after you slay Deimos's most powerful entity, the Cyber Demon, do you discover Deimos is actually floating not above Mars like it once was, but rather above hell. Holy guacamole, Batman! The corrupted portal sent the Martian moon to another dimension! Thus, the next step for Doom Guy is to descend to hell's surface, where he ultimately defeats the Spider Mastermind, who was the real mover and shaker behind the invasion of our dimension. From here, a portal to Earth 
opens, revealing a world that's already been invaded by the forces of hell, setting the stage for Doom 2 Hell on Earth. Now before I talk your ear off with summary, let's round up a takeaway from all this, shall we? The UAC, the Union Aerospace Corporation, fucked up real bad with their technological tinkering. That's not to say that paradigm-shifting technology shouldn't be developed, but clearly something went wrong here. For example, some two centuries ago, the first vaccine was developed by a different kind of tinkerer named Edward Jenner. With the knowledge he acquired about the human body, he was able to save thousands of lives with a smallpox vaccine. This knowledge could have been used to engineer even deadlier diseases, or he could have invented the vaccine and charged exorbitant prices for it because people would be willing to pay anything to not die. The reason that Mr. Jenner over here didn't do the microbiology equivalent of opening a portal to hell is because his morals grew in parallel with his technological advancement. This is to say his knowledge wasn't outpacing his love. While this seems like a strange tangent, it's incredibly relevant to what went wrong deep within the labs of the UAC. I'll tell you why soon enough, because right now I feel like I'm ignoring Doom Guy. I don't want to hurt his feelings, the little darling. What's his role in this whole technological advancement outpacing moral reasoning gobbledygook? It's not like he's a harbinger of progressive values. I mean, he did assault his commanding officer rather than fire on innocent civilians, so maybe he is in a weird way. To understand what the Doom storyline is trying to tell us about our real-life society, and to understand Doom Guy's role in delivering that message, let's dive right into Doom 2 Hell on Earth. Our grisly protagonist steps out onto earthen soil, only to find his home planet overrun by otherworldly demons. Now, billions of humans are dead by the twisted hands of the devil. Only a select few remain, hoping against hope to escape the now decimated Earth. With the help of our muscly space marine, they succeed in their mission, escaping the atmosphere for the safety of space while Doom Guy remains on the surface. He aided their escape at his own expense, and now he waits for death. That is until he receives a transmission from the escapees now orbiting Earth. They inform Doom Guy that they found where the demon armies are originating from. None other than Doom Guy's hometown. Coincidence? I think not. And so he returns home to find his nostalgia deeply intertwined with hell, where once familiar ruins twist from the ground, corrupted by demonic reality. This journey homeward climaxes in a successful battle with the Baphomet which you may recall from our last video is a famous depiction of the devil. With that, we've covered the second installment of Doom. So can we squeeze its hidden meaning out like liquid high in vitamin C from a ripe, juicy orange? Of course we can! Obviously, the UAC's moral ineptitude didn't develop much in this game, but Doom Guy's purpose certainly did. When his next mission to save Earth was found to be the vanquishing of demons centered in his home town, a light bulb should have popped up for you. But if it didn't, allow me to force feed you ideas in a semi-consensual way. Here comes the choo-choo train! Choo-choo! Doom Guy's mission to vanquish Satan's army that just so happened to be centered in his hometown is nothing short of a metaphor beating us over the head with its meaning. It means that in order to save humanity from this existential threat, Doom Guy had to go within the boundaries of the place that built him and vanquish the demons which resided there. On an individual level, we all have demons to fight. They may not manifest as the Baphomet or Cyber Demon, but they will try to entice you into acts of greed and hatred. While this concept may seem unrelated to the big picture of technology outpacing morals, it's not. The gargantuan corporation that is UAC obviously consists entirely of people. It wasn't the faceless entity of UAC that broke into interdimensional space for the sole purpose of profit. It was the executives who ordered the operation. It was the scientists who went through with the operation. The final mission of Doom 2 is essentially a metaphor for conquering our own inner demons, and from that came the elimination of demons run amok. I mean, the final mission, and Doom as a whole for that matter, is also a violence-flaunting hardcore kill fest, but that can be interpreted in many ways, most importantly the way I'm interpreting it. 
Case in point, Doom 3. The 2004 game begins with a briefing by a hot-sounding computer lady. The first thing we notice is that this title isn't a sequel to the past two installments. It's a reboot, meaning its story exists independently of the first two installments. So let's see what newfangled but similar plot they've got going on here. The Union Aerospace Corporation is the largest corporate entity in existence. Originally focused on weapon and defense contracts, new ventures have expanded into biological research, space exploration, and other scientific endeavors. With unlimited funds and the ability to engage in research outside of moral and legal obligations, the UAC controls the most advanced technology ever conceived. Holy hell! It's like Time Warner and Hitler had a baby and then it grew to encompass the solar system! From here, it's abundantly clear what's going on. Hug, at this point I hardly even have to address the details of the plot, so I won't. Save for this man, Dr. Malcolm Betruger, who the UAC hired as their director of research, no less. Time to fire the HR department, guys. He's literally so evil that he turns into a demonic gargoyle thing after his plans to have Hell's armies overrun Earth falls through thanks to Doom Guy. The takeaway from Doom 3 is essentially that it's a more up-to-date, more sexy, more complex, more immersive version of the ones that came before it. A perfect reboot in every way. So then, with our message reaffirmed, it's time to condense these mushy, abstract ideas into solid concrete. As the Union Aerospace Corporation pushed the limits of technology, it did so only with the intention to maximize profit and gain power. The act of advancing technology is of course not inherently bad. In fact, doing just that has allowed humanity to prosper like never before. Vaccines, running water, space travel, all of these inventions undoubtedly benefited humanity more than they harmed it, and that's because they, by and large, were developed for better reasons than just maximizing profit or building an empire. A moral compass directed the uses of these emerging technologies, and that moral compass is something that the soulless UAC simply ignored. A quote from Einstein regarding the development of the atom bomb sums the message of doom up perfectly. As written by the crazy-haired genius man himself, the splitting of the atom changed everything, save for man's mode of thinking. Thus we drift towards unparalleled catastrophe. When Doom Guy slayed the demons residing within his hometown, residing in his own psyche, he also changed his mode of thinking. Rather than being tempted by the demons of greed and Baphomet, he charged up his BFG and boomed them out of existence. This vanquishing of inner demons allowed not only Doom Guy, but the rest of humanity to carry on its existence without the evil tendrils of hell reaching out from the abyss inside of us. Perhaps then, this interdimensional technology could one day be used without the consequences blowing up in our faces. Perhaps then, our state-of-the-art technologies in real life today could be used exclusively for the betterment of humanity rather than as a means of maintaining power. This race between advancement and morals grips us at this very moment. For instance, while the internet has helped unify us, there are some who wish to control the internet and thus control and exploit those who use it. So then, humanity in the Doom universe laid its demons only after those same demons annihilated billions of people. Will we in real life need a badass space marine to save us from our powerful but unenlightened selves? Or will moral reasoning keep pace with technological advancement? Doom being not only a blood splattering and violence ridden death rampage, but also a lesson in needing to evolve our personal and societal values. That's the story. You never knew. It really has a lovely message, that whole Doom game. But to really expand your consciousness, comment your thoughts on our interpretation of Doom and we'll post the lulzy ones to our Twitter at Team. Sound good? It does? Perfect! See you later, everyone.